Hello friends. So in the previous video, we have seen what is the rotor frequency. Okay, the EMF induced in the rotor, what is its frequency? And we saw that the rotor frequency is related to the stator or the input supply by the slip value. So this is the relation that we got in the previous video, right? So with these uh, concepts in mind, we can start with the equivalent circuit of induction motor. Okay, so basically the equivalent circuit of induction motor, we will do divide it into three. One, today we will see transformer model. In the next video, we will see the rotor model of the induction motor. And then we will see a final consolidated uh, equivalent circuit of the induction motor. Okay. Now, because um, the working principle or the power transfer, the power transfer from the stator, from the stator to the rotor, what is the phenomenon which is happening? It is induction, right? Okay, so this is very similar of the power transfer from the primary of a transformer to a secondary of the transformer. That is also through the induction process, right? So therefore, the equivalent circuit of the induction motor is very similar, okay, to the equivalent circuit of a transformer, okay? So this is very important because ultimately what is an induction motor? You are having three phase windings uh, over a uh, stator core, which is in a magnetic material and you are having the uh, input supply, right? You are giving three phase supply. Transformer basically what you are having, you are having one limb, you are having windings in which uh, electrical supply is given. So both both of them, constructionally they might not be similar, but uh, in terms of electrical things, they are very similar. Okay, so that is why the equivalent circuit of the induction motor is very similar to that of a transformer. So we can, for the stator side, let us draw. So this was the equivalent circuit of a transformer, right? So we had something like this and this we call the no load branch, right, or the shunt branch and uh, this is something like this. This was the for the transformer on the primary side. So the equivalent circuit of the induction motor also will be very similar, but this will be not the primary side, but this will be the stator side. Okay, this will be the equivalent circuit of the stator and this will be the resistance of the stator winding. And this will be the reactance of the stator winding, which shows the leakage reactance. So whatever concepts we have learned in the transformer, we can apply it here. So if you have not seen my transformer videos, definitely see the initial videos, lecture number one to around 10, which will help you to understand all these concepts. And then you will have the core loss component. So we can represent it by RC. And then you are having this magnetizing component. You can represent it by XY, right? So the input current, we can call it as I1 and here, we can call this as IM and this current we can call it as IC core loss component and this I5 is magnetizing component, right? And now remember that induction motor usually now what we are dealing is a three phase machine and this equivalent circuit is per phase, right? So this voltage will be V phase. So if you are having a star uh, connected induction motor, so you have to take the line voltage and divide it by root three and put it here. So V phase will be VL divided by root three for a star connection. So this is the stator side. So stator side, it will have the frequency of electrical frequency Fe, okay, or the supply frequency. Now, from here, via induction, the EMF is transferred to the secondary side. So let's call this value as E1, okay. So the EMF induced in the winding. So this is called the stator side, okay. And we'll just write down for every parameters, we'll write down it once again. But uh, now let us go to the rotor side. So in the rotor side, we can call it as E2. So this is the rotor winding. And then it will have a resistance R2. So we call it as RR. Okay. So this is RR. And this will be the rotor reactance, which represents the leakage flux of the rotor. This is representing leakage flux of the stator. Okay. And you know that the windings are shorted out, right? And you can see that in a squirrel coach or a wound round, wound motor, the rotor is shorted out. So this will look like this. So this is the rotor side. So we have seen already the rotor works in a different frequency. It works in a frequency FR, which is equal to S into Fe, right? So these are the, this is basically the equivalent circuit of the induction motor, okay? Now, one thing that you have to remember here is that the relation between E1 and E2, okay? So that is uh, in a transformer, we used to call it as uh, transformation ratio. So we here also we can have an effective transformation ratio or K effective, which will be the number of conductors number of conductors per phase in the rotor okay divided by the number of conductors per phase in the stator 
just like uh, transformation ratio is n2 divided by n1 so here also it is the same thing but however in this case because it's a motor sometimes they use the concepts like distribution factor or pitch factor or breadth factor etc so you have to consider those also thing those things also and uh, the solution you can get However, this thing is not very important because usually uh, this does not play an important role because in the final circuit, we will make everything come towards the stator side. And usually numericals, always the resistance is referred to the stator side and that value is usually given. Okay, So we need not bother this unless you become a designer of an induction motor. So that time the industry will teach you how to do all these things. Anyway, this is just a point to note here. So now uh, let us uh, write down each term. So R1 is the stator resistance okay r1 is the stator resistance of course all these things things per phase right resistance per phase but i'm not writing that here and x1 is the leakage reactance leakage reactance of the stator okay last time r1 was primary resistance and this was the leakage reactance of the primary now it now it becomes the stator side and rc is the core loss component core loss component and x phi is the magnetizing component magnetizing component and rr is the rotor resistance rotor resistance okay and then you are having xr here which is the rotor reactance or the rotor leakage reactance so these are the different terms which you find here now one important topic to understand from here is the comparison between the uh, magnetizing curve of an induction motor and a transformer so comparing the magnetization curve of an induction motor and a transformer okay so for example we are having a graph like this so where flux is here and here you can have uh, the current axis im or we can take the uh, mmf also that is ampere turns okay everything represents the same thing so for example here is the transformer equivalent circuit sorry transfer uh, magnetization curve so this is for the transformer okay the induction motor if you see it will look something like this. that is it will be below this transformation transformer diagram why it is this because for example let us take for a particular value of flux here or let us take for a particular value of im okay for a particular value of im okay you can see that the flux produced by the induction motor which is this value phi induction motor is much much lesser than the flux produced by the transformer right so for a particular im for a particular im the flux produced by the induction motor is very less as compared to the flux produced by the transformer now why this happens now you know that in a transformer circuit which looks like this okay the flux path is through the magnetic core which is a high permeability material right the flux path is through a magnetic core which is a high permeability material and look at the induction motor for example this is the stator structure and this is the rotor structure for the power transfer the flux has to move from the secondary to the sorry the from the stator to the rotor right and in between what do you have in between you are having air gap which is a high permeability region it has to cross this air gap and interact with the rotor but here it has the entire core structure which is a good permeable material right so in that is why for a given value of im the flux produced that by the induction motor is much less as compared to the flux produced by a transformer okay so or we can tell it like this also for a given value of flux for example this value okay so for a given value of flux phi you see that the current required by the transformer which is this value is much less as by the current required by the induction motor right so the, for a particular value of flux the current required by by the transformer is only this much but the current required by the induction motor is this much so there are two ways of understanding the same thing so this is also important so this is the reason why if you see the no load current now remember look at this thing here in the transformer what did we do we made this no load current move to this side right we took this no load branch and we moved this to this side so that we can have easier calculation but in induction motor you cannot do that why that is why this point is very important in an induction motor the no load current is very high is high okay so in a transformer the no load current is only about 5 percentage of the full load current right it's a very small value because you see the flux the no load current is the current which is required to produce the rated flux right 
So that is only 5 percentage of the full load. But in the induction motor, around 30 to 40 percentage of full load current. The no load current value is around 30 to 40 percentage of the full load current, which is far, far higher as compared to a transformer. Therefore, you cannot simply move the no load branch or the shunt branch towards the left side. Because in that case, you will not be actually considering the no load copper loss. Okay. And the no load copper loss, even though we can neglect in the transformer, it is a substantial value in the induction motor because the no load current itself is the 30 to 40 percentage of the full load current. And if you were to do a calculation like that, our value will have a lot of errors. Okay. That is why because the no, no load current of the induction motor is so high, we cannot simply move this no load branch to the left side and make a simple solution. Okay. So that is one thing that you have to understand. Okay. So what did we see today? Today we have seen that the induction motor equivalent circuit will be very similar to that of the uh, transformer. And we drew the stator side equivalent circuit which is very similar and that is working at the frequency Fe. And then we draw the rotor side frequency, uh, rotor side equivalent circuit and that is working at the frequency Fr which is different as compared to Fe. Now one more thing which I want to tell here is that this value of E2, okay, this is also an important value here. Now the value of E2, we will see it in the next video also. That is very important. Now, when the rotor is stationary, when the rotor is stationary, okay, that is the Nm value is equal to zero. Okay, that means the flux cutting will be maximum, right? When the rotor itself is not rotating, the flux cutting will be maximum. Okay, so that time E2 value will be, we can call it as E20, which is the maximum value. Okay. Now, as Nm increases, what happens? The relative velocity decreases between the stator and the rotor stator magnetic field and the rotor the relative velocity increases when relative velocity increases what do happen e2 will decrease emf induced in the rotor will decrease this we have already seen so if nm is equal to n sync right so the relative velocity between the stator magnetic field and the rotor magnetic field will be equal to zero and at that point e2 will be equal to zero so just how we derive the expression fr is equal to s into fe we can tell E2 value will be equal to S into E2 0. Okay. So when Nm is equal to 0, that is under standstill condition, slip value will be equal to N sync minus 0 divided by N sync, right? So this value will be 1. So when Nm is equal to 0, that is slip equal to 1, E2 will be equal to E2 0, which we have already seen here. Now when Nm is equal to the synchronous speed, slip value will be equal to N sync minus N sync divided by n sync right so this value will be equal to 0 and that time e2 will be equal to 0 right for this value and this value therefore this is the expression for e2 e2 is equal to s into e20 okay and fr is equal to s into fe and on similar lines this value xr this value xr also will depend upon the frequency right what is xr xr is equal to 2 pi into fr right 2 pi into fr and this value will be equal to 2 pi what is fr value is equal to it is s into fe okay so you can take 2 pi fe to be equal to x20 and that means xr value will be equal to s into x20 right so this e20 is called the blocked rotor voltage or the emf at standstill condition this x20 is called blocked rotor reactance okay so e20 is called blocked rotor voltage okay or standstill rotor voltage and e20 and x20 is called the blocked rotor reactance okay that is e20 and x20 and e2 is the emf induced on the rotor and XR is the leakage reactance of the rotor. Okay, so we have seen all these things. A little bit we'll see in the next video also when we draw the rotor equivalent circuit. Okay, we've already seen that, but we'll see it in a little bit more depth. Okay, so if you have enjoyed this video, uh, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Now that the video is over, please stay with me for 30 more seconds. Now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering. Now, if you want to help me spread the word, please share this video with anyone interested in these topics. The second thing is that for me, education is a two-way process. Therefore, if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel, please put them in the comments below. 
we can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers so that's it for today's video so till i see you in the next time it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you